Hi. Hopefully this time it will work. <laughs> Third time lucky, we'll see. Um, unless there's some issue with Facebook not liking me talking about confirmation bias, but that's what I'm talking about now. I've deleted the previous two broadcasts because they got really messed up. Hopefully this time will go through clearly, and if it doesn't, I am going to complain to Facebook. So, confirmation bias. This is a topic that's been brewing for a while, and I've attempted to talk about it three times. <laughs> it's two times now, this is my third time. Because it's something that's been, I'm noticing, very prevalent now, very recently especially. And in particular, I've become very aware that confirmation bias is a temptation we fall into. And let me explain what it is first, or should say the definition as far as I remember it, and explain how it works, and also some examples, and you'll hopefully understand what I mean. So the definition, or the explanation of confirmation bias is, is basically um, collecting data and information to back up an opinion you have without doing the research first. Hi, Hi Leslie. This is my third attempt to try and get this broadcast done. It, kept, it, it got completely messed up the last two times. Um, so the definition, again, of confirmation bias <laughs> is, in the, is in the framework of a focus on gathering corroborating information for the viewpoint you've already made. So rather than being one who asks questions and learns about things and makes a decision afterwards, like okay, okay, you make a decision first, then you try to find information to back it up. That's kind of how it works. There's more to it than that, but that's one of the ways I'm playing with it because I've noticed that happening a lot. And especially around relationships and conversations between people, not just romantic relationships, but all relationships. So we'll get to that in a minute. So first, let me, pr let me detour slightly. Actually, no, that comes later. Having talked about this twice, I've already got an idea what I'm going to say. So like, hopefully this time will be clear. So let me let me preamble this and say, let me use an example. That's better. Duh. An example. So one of the ways that you may notice you're doing, you're having a confirmation bias is if you make assumptions about what people are saying to you or for you or around you before you even listen to what they're saying. I had a, I put a post up 10 days ago, give or take, maybe two weeks now. But I posted it was a meme of um, an old black and white photograph, like from the 50s, I guess, or the 40s, based on the car they were there, with a man holding the door open for a woman to sit down inside the car. And the caption, or the, or the t uh, description was that a gentleman does not, um, a gentleman, sorry, a gentleman opening a door for a woman does not mean he thinks she's weak. He does it out of respect. At least the way I wrote it was, and this is what I put out there. All well and good. That was all fine, and that's what I believe from my experience and what I and how I do this is like when I when I open the door for a woman, which I do because I'm, it's my DNA. I was raised with this, is to do it out of respect. It's like you know, respect for woman to open, you know, unless she opened the door for herself. And I've had arguments with women who did this to me. Would say I can do it myself. It's like I know you can, but I'm I'm here to serve, to inspire and help. So I put the post up. And next day or so, a lot of people were commenting and stuff, and it was great. But one woman in particular put a comment in there about how she caught, she said something on the lines of, and I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, this is absolute, this is like a crock of bull. That men only want one thing, and when they open the door for her, it's because they want something from her, they want to get in their pants or whatever it is, and she can't trust any man. That's kind of how she said it. Now I'm exaggerating slightly because I'm making a point here. So I questioned that, and I said, is that true of all men? And she said she's lived in many countries, and she said men are of the water like this. And the partner goes, excuse me, um, this guy doesn't. So I've already proven your theory wrong. Not all men are like that. But it was, she wasn't going to hear it. See, the thing was, is she was under a confirmation. She was under a confirmation bias. And yes, it could be labeled other things too. But the trap that she fell into, which she wasn't willing to ask questions. In fact, I would suggest that if you want to break out of the confirmation bias, Question your own values. Question yourself, saying, if what I'm, is what I believe true or not? In fact, I would recommend that as a, ha as a practice daily now, because what's going on in social media, and in the politics, and the news, and the mainstream media, and everything else, there's a lot of stuff out there that can put you into automatic reaction. And the thing is, when we react to situations, oftentimes it's because we have a different viewpoint, we don't want to violate it. In fact, I would go as far as to say that confirmation bias oftentimes is so... Um, tightly gripped because it's based out of fear of being proven wrong. Many people I know, not everybody, I, I'm very clear about this, but many people I know are very attached to being right. Almost as if the being wrong would make them somehow less than, they'd lose their value, they'd be unworthy if they were wrong. That's the wiring inside what people have. You may have it yourself. Just checking if I did. I don't remember having that one. 
I have other ones, but not that one. So the, the understanding was that it was better to stay safe and be right than be in the unknown of being wrong or, the un, or being in the, the uncertainty of being in the, in the unknown. And my, um, my message to you, my invitation to you, my recommendation is question that. You know, have a questioning stance about your own beliefs. I, I have come across more than one instance in my life, many instances in fact, where I've, I've had to ask myself, do, is what I believe true or not? Because what happens is, and this is part of the learning of being a human being, I suspect, is that we tend to adopt new understandings as we grow. We get lessons, we get opportunities to learn new things, and sometimes it doesn't match what we had before. And for some people, they'd rather go back to the old values they already believe in than adopt or embrace the new teaching they're getting. I've been thankful that I've made enough mistakes in my life that I'm adopting, I keep taking new information all the time. I, right now, I'm very um, invested is the word, I guess, but I'm definitely studying a lot of things of human design. I've got the human design book, the big, big, the thick book, and also the Gene Keys book. Fascinating stuff. And in that context, there's some really good education that's changing my perception of myself and of the world. Now, I didn't know anything about this stuff maybe two years ago. This is brand new to me. So, so in some sense, it was always out there because the books were written years ago, but I didn't know anything about it. So my perspective of the world, my understanding of what I believe is true has changed. What I'm getting clear about is my confirmation bias is loosely held. Because if you have, if you have a death grip on your conversation, in your, excuse me, on your confirmation bias, you may be painting yourself into a corner. So in the title I mentioned about how it can, it's a game you will lose, especially in relationships, is confirmation bias basically is a place where you end up playing right wrong with other people. And you're trying to hold on to, you're trying to hold on to the position of being wrong, of, excuse me, being right. Actually, well, some people do have, a, have attachment to being wrong as well. Let me play that one out for a second too. This is detour slightly, but I want to play with this one. So one of those things is that we want to be proven right because when we're right, it means we have value. When we're right, we think we're worthy. This is the wiring most of us carry. When we're right, we succeed. When we're right, we're looked, at, looked upon with approval. When we're wrong, we tend to think we've looked on with disapproval, certainly with ourselves. So this understanding of the right-wrong thing, and because it is a, a, um, um, a binary choice, means that if you're playing in the right conversation, somebody else, somebody else is playing the wrong conversation, which means any relationship you're in, which means you and somebody else, if you're attached to being right, likely you want to put the other person in a position of being wrong. That's why it's a game you will lose, because you won't get the love you want if you're playing the right wrong game. Clear? Now, yes, there are situations where you can both be right, but can you be right with different perspectives? Hmm, that's an interesting question. <laughs> can you be right about something, and the other person have a different perspective and also be right? There's an analogy I'll throw forward. This is something that I remember reading a long time ago. It's a, um, the, the parable, I guess? I think it's the parable of the three blind men who who found who, who uh, came across an elephant and they chose to describe it to each other and every single one of them got a different perspective. One said it was the, the, the elephant was like a tree trunk because it was because this guy this man was 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 feeling the, the rough um, bark like legs, the big thick legs of the elephant. No one said no 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 it's not it's not it's not a tree. It's like it's it's a big plant, it's got big leaves because it's holding on to it's holding on to the elephant's ear. It's got like a big leaf. And the other one, the other blind man said, no, 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 it's like a snake. Like, it's a snake, it's tail, because he's holding up the tail. This thing's moving around, it's like, a, it's like a snake. And so they all had different opinions of what the elephant was, that he, they couldn't see the whole picture. And sometimes with confirmation bias, it's a narrow um, tunnel vision viewpoint. We have the opportunity oftentimes in life to see a bigger picture when we step back. So what's going on out right now with the viruses, with the vaccines, with the lockdowns, with the masks, with everything else, many people, many people, are grabbing hold of one thing, like a, like a dog with a bone, and not willing to let go, and no one to see another perspective. They're right and everybody else is wrong. And if you're not joining them, you're in the wrong. Now I've been, I posted a couple of things, I made, I made mistakes by posting, I'm being clear about that. There were things that were not um, judiciously posted, and I got a lot of back, backlash for it. My understanding now, especially as I've sat back a bit more and seen what's going on, is there's a lot more, a lot more to see out there. And yes, there I see some right in both sides, in both columns, so to speak. In fact, I'm seeing lots of choices along the right, along the way, where we can choose. 
Now, another thing I want to throw in there, just to give you something to think about, is when you have confirmation bias in your life, you tend to have a, you have a tendency, you tend to have, you have a tendency that draws you into things that mirror or complement that thing that you're really right about. Again, confirmation bias is where you want to be right about something, and you'll find evidence to match that confirmation bias again and again and again. Even if it's not the truth, you'll hold on to that. The way that works, I believe, physiologically, and it ties together with who we are, if we have a thing, we have a thing. <laughs> we, have a bunch of, we have a bunch of wiring, so to speak, in the back of our brain, called the reticular, reticular activating system, RAS for short. And the RAS is a, I'm, I'm not sure if it's in the limbic brain, I think it's in, it's in the reptilian brain, I believe. But anyway, what it does is it has a way of being um, a filter for everything that comes in. I remember reading somewhere in an article that we have something like 60, no, 500,000 different things hitting us all the time through our eyes, through our ears, through our sense of touch and feeling and taste, smell, everything. We get inundated with information. It's too much for us to handle on a conscious level. So our RAAS in the back here, our activating system, is a filter that filters out the majority of the things that we can focus on. One example I've, I've shared before is the idea of a, a mother of a newborn baby. When the baby is sleeping, the mother is very aware, intuitively, sensitively, how you say it, where if the baby rolls over in its sleep or changes its breathing or has a cough or anything else, she's immediately awake and in the room next to the baby. At the same time, if fire trucks go by the house, she may not even hear them because it's not a primary focus. That's the, that's the ability of the reticular, I'll try it again, reticular activating system working. But the same way, the question comes up because you're getting so much stuff thrown at us every day and that RAS is filtering it out, what decides what that filter is? Who's in charge of it? You might say, well, I'm in charge of that. No, you're in charge of that, yes. And at the same time, based on what you put out there as your, your choice points of what you are willing to receive, will contextualize what is actually put through the filter. Confirmation bias is a discrete way of looking at the world through a lens that you then want to find things that match to, so your reticular, reticular activating system, damn it, that, there's a that, tongue tying words, will filter in only things that match that. So your viewpoint of the world becomes limited to what you already believe, and you get no choice to see anything else in the world. Frankly, that's, that's a very narrow view of the world, a narrow way of seeing of things. So my recommendations I mentioned earlier is to question yourself, question your own authority, to see that perhaps what you believe about something might not be true. Now, I've gone through many evolutions of that in my own life. I, I left the Jewish faith in my teens because what I was indoctrinated into didn't fit me anymore. As I describe it in, in, one of my, in my book, I said that I went through my spiritual crisis at the age of 13. That was an early, an early start on that one. But the understanding was is that I knew that I had to question my own beliefs about things because it didn't match. In fact, a lot of things I've come to believe in were evolutionary rather than just saying, I'm believing this and damn it, it's going to happen. And it's interesting, uh, Reverend Michael of the Guppy has said it many times about how we, we say, we, we are, hey, hey Steve, thank you for the love, that um, we'll see it, it's not so much we'll believe it when we see it, but we'll see it when we believe it. And this is true for this. So basically what I'm saying is confirmation bias is true. When you hold um, that, well, not values, when you believe in something without actually knowing what it is, you'll start getting confirmation for that belief so it can then make you feel like you're right. And that's not, and that, that is not necessarily the truth. So it's important to get clear about what it is you really want to believe. Understanding that your, your, um, your finer cabinet of a brain <laughs> is a variable and renewable resource, you know, it can be stuck in any particular part. So confirmation bias is a game you can win when you, when you stop, stop playing with it. When you start learning to be a student of life, to be a researcher, to be a person questing and asking questions, which is what I do, is learning how to really not be attached to a viewpoint that may be to your detriment. Now, I'll cover a lot of pieces here. I hope this has given you some things to think about and to um, co contemplate. Thank you, Brittany. Nice to see you. Hi. Um, so this is a key thing. When we understand that we have choice, just to reiterate that point, then we can be less attached to being right, more attached to being open. You know, there's many quotes out about you can be right or you can be happy, you can be right or you can be loving, you can be right or be whatever, because being right isn't necessarily the right choice. Right, right, yeah, 
Yeah. No. <laughs> what I'm speaking to though is that you have the ability to choose differently every single moment. And especially if you are someone like myself who's always learning new things, reading and studying, learning new courses, doing things like that. What I believe now, tomorrow will be this or this or this. It'll keep changing. Not to say that I'm not being constant. What I'm doing is expanding my beliefs. Oh, I'm, hopefully if people understand, but well, I, the air conditioner just came on, so there might be a blowing noisily. And frankly, this is my third attempt to do this Facebook Live over the last two days, three days, two days, three days since Saturday. And I was using a microphone, which I think was causing the problem. It was garbling. So hopefully this is being loud enough for you. So if not in the replay, I'll check it when I get off, when I finish. This has been a, a, a labor of love, <laughs> love to get this thing out there, <laughs> to say the least. Um, but yeah, so and I hope this makes some sense. So I'm gonna leave it, wrap it up now, because frankly, I want to get this point clearly, that being right isn't necessarily the best choice. Thank you, Brittany, appreciate that. Um, and, and being willing to ask questions, to be willing to let go of your confirmation bias will improve every single relationship because you won't be attached to being right at the price of somebody else being wrong. These two things, being willing to ask questions and not being attached to being right, will change the game for you. And will change your relationships with everybody around you, especially the one in the mirror. So take it to heart. I mean, this is this is a little educational piece, but if you have any questions, please you can reach out to me on social media or put questions below. Um, my work is shifting my coaching. I'm still working with people on self-support. This is one of those pieces I'm really sort of unpacking for myself and for you as well. Um, I appreciate you watching. Thanks for being with me. I trust this sounded better than it did the last two times because I deleted those that were so bad. And uh, that should be it. Hope I'm going I'm to check this after I get signed off to make sure it's okay because it's taken a few times to get this one done. Maybe those are the reminder to me, the lesson to me by spirit to go. Facebook's going to keep messing up for your Facebook lives um, and see if this works or not. So with that, I thank you for watching. I appreciate being with me. Any questions, comments, message me or, or leave comments below and uh, I'll see you again another time. And as always, please take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon.